This campaign certainly has raised a lot of cash, $20 million alone over the last three months, and he's feeling a lot of love from very enthusiastic supporters. Polls, however, show that Congressman Ron Paul is still way back in the pack among Republican candidates in Iowa. Can he come up with a caucus day surprise? Ron Paul is joining us now from Des Moines. I'm going to tease that question. We'll get back to it later. But let's go through some of the issues, Congressman, first, uh, and then we'll come back to politics. If you were elected president on the first day that you're in the Oval Office, what would you do with the hundreds of thousands of U.S. troops who are deployed around the world? I would announce that they'd be starting to come home. I would immediately turn the Navy around from the shores of Iran, announce that we have no intention on bombing Iran if we are not provoked. And there's no reason why we should have an option on the table to literally start another war. And we're already in two countries, we're nation building, and the announcement would be as soon as practical and safely, we're going to bring our troops home. All right, so I just want to be precise. Money. I want to be precise. All the troops in Iraq, all the troops in Afghanistan, and Germany, Japan, elsewhere where they're deployed around the world, all of them come back to the continental United States. Yes, they do not serve our interests. We're going broke. We're in, we've been in Korea since World War II almost, and, and uh, we've been in Japan and Germany. And, uh, you know, the dollar is reflecting uh, our condition in this country. The dollar is going down because we can't maintain 700 bases overseas, and we're going to have to come home eventually. That's what usually happens to an empire. An empire goes broke, and the currency is what goes bad, and that's what's happening to us right now. So the sooner we wake up, the better. What would be your number one demand? Domestic priority on that first day in the White House. What would you immediately do domestically? Well, there's not a whole lot you can do without a Congress on one day. You can't change, change domestic policy. I think it's the announcement of being able to work, try to work with Congress to realize that if you cut the spending overseas, that you don't have to put anybody out in the streets here so people shouldn't be fearful that they're going to lose the benefits that maybe someday we won't need to give so many people. But that's what we have to do. We have to work in that direction. But I also would direct the Justice Department to be dealing with uh, people in a different way. I mean, how much, how much energy and money do we have to spend in order to enforce, uh, to override state laws in California to arrest people who take marijuana for, uh, because they have cancer for medicinal reasons. I mean, that type of activity is so unnecessary. So there's a lot of things in personal liberties you could change. I would respect, uh, you know, the privacy of all Americans. I would never abuse, ab abuse the uh, right to invade and, and spy on people. I would never torch. I would order the CIA not to torture, and I would uh, close down the secret prisons, and I would certainly respect habeas corpus. What, what about your, your uh, long-standing position of abolishing the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service? You really want to do away with the federal income tax. Uh, where would the federal government get money for badly needed services? Let's say, for example, another Hurricane Katrina or another 9-11 type of attack. Where would the money come from if there would be no taxes? Well, there would be taxes. If you got rid of the income tax now, you'd have the same revenues as we had 10 years ago, so that's not all that bad. And we did run our country up until 1913 without an income tax, so uh, government wouldn't disappear. There are import taxes, tariffs, and uh, and other user fees. Uh, there, there'd still be plenty of revenue. Be, would that be enough revenue to keep the federal government going? Not at the current level. No, you couldn't. You couldn't maintain the welfare state. You couldn't run all these departments, Department of Energy and Department of Education, and all these things. No, you'd have to cut back. So you don't. One president can't get rid of the income. So tax with social, itself, se with social security, Medicare, those kinds of services be abolished. No, but we, I would certainly like to see the day that young people would opt out, and you'd have to do that over a generation. Let the young people get out, because they're not going to get anything out of it anyway, and they know it. But the only way you can take care of the elderly, like I said, don't put anybody out in the street. You can't do that. You can't get people out of Social Security and take care of the ones who are dependent unless you cut these billions, hundreds of billions of dollars overseas. That's where our foolish spending is occurring. We don't have to punish ourselves. We need to take care of our people here at home. You're doing incredibly well in fundraising. As I said, $20 million you've raised in the past three months. $20 million in the last three months alone. Is that the final number, by the way? Yes, and uh, no, it's not final because they're adding up, you know, what comes in through the mail on the computer, uh, you know, uh, through the Internet. It was 19.5, but it'll be very close to uh, 20 million. And you've got enthusiastic supporters. How do you think you're going to do tomorrow in the Iowa caucuses? 
you know, the truth is, is I don't know, but if this enthusiasm is translated into votes, so believe me, there are going to be some surprises. It may even be a big surprise for me, but uh, everything's been a surprise. Who would have ever predicted that we could raise $20 million in three months and get the support that we're having and the enthusiasm? Because I'm not promising things like, well, I'm going to give you. All I want to do is give people their freedom back and get the government out of their lives, bring our troops home, and have a sound dollar once again, and yet the support just keeps growing by leaps and bounds. I've, I've so I am with, impressed I've, and I'm very pleased. I've spoken with experts who think uh, you, you probably will do surprisingly well in New Hampshire where there are a lot of independents who might come to your, to your cause. Uh, how do you think you'll do in New Hampshire next Tuesday? Well, I think, once again, I don't know exactly, but I think we're going to do better than the poll show, which always shows me at the very bottom. You know, they're even saying that I am so low that I do not even qualify to get in the debates anymore. Well, let me ask, you, the, let me ask you that question. Now, ABC has a Republican presidential debate and a Democratic presidential debate Saturday night. Have you been told you'll be allowed to participate in that debate? Yeah, I, I'm uh, under the assumption I will be there Saturday, but not on Sunday. Sunday, on there's, Fox a Fox, Day, there's a Fox uh, forum yeah. Sunday night. Uh, have they told you right. you won't be allowed to participate in that one? That is right. We, we've called and called and called. We've never received the invitation. And the party up there said that they were going to withdraw support of the function if they didn't allow me to be in the, uh, in the, in the uh, forum. So we haven't heard the final answer yet. But it'll be interesting to see what would happen if we do well tomorrow and they allow somebody into that, into that forum that I might be able to beat tomorrow. So I think, I think they're sort of uh, put themselves in a box. We'll watch uh, together with you, uh, Congressman Ron Paul. Thanks very much for coming in. Good luck. Thank you very much.